ओके सो वी हैव द लास्ट वीक वी हैव कंप्लीटेड द डिस्कशन ऑन बेसिक लाइफ सपोर्ट टू स्टार्ट विद देन वी वेंट हेड विद द कार्डियक अरेस्ट एल्गोरिथम सो इन द कार्डियक अरेस्ट एल्गोरिथम वी डिस्कस रिगार्डिंग द शॉकेबल रिदम एंड नॉन शॉकेबल रिदम व्हिच आर द शॉकेबल रिदम व्हिच आर द नॉन शॉकेबल रिदम and what need to be done when you identify that this patient is having a shockable rhythm then what to be done you have a non shockable rhythm defibrillation how to do and what are the reversible causes of cardiac arrest and what are the different doses of drugs that we need to use we have discussed regarding drugs epinephrine amiodarone lignocaine and we have discussed magnesium sulfate so these are the drugs that we discussed and in the last class we in detail discuss how to Identify a possible reversible cause of cardiac arrest. So, five H and five Ts we have discussed. So, from there we have uh, come to a system called as we have reached return of spontaneous circulation. So, otherwise the patient has been revived. The patient has been revived from cardiac arrest. So, once you achieve return of spontaneous circulation, what are the things that you need to do? That is otherwise called as we can call it as post cardiac arrest care. so what are the minimum prerequisites of a post cardiac arrest care is what we are going to discuss in the next maybe in the next 15 20 minutes so you can see this is the aha algorithm of the return of spontaneous circulation post cardiac arrest algorithm what you are seeing here so most important thing you have achieved return of spontaneous circulation so after that what you need to do so just like any other patient that how will you assess we have to remember airway breathing circulation and there are certain targets that we need to maintain so the first thing that we need to look in is manage the airway the patient is not having an advanced airway the patient requires an advanced airway we have discussed we can do an advanced airway initially itself or else you can do in the later part of the resuscitation also once the roc is achieved so if the roc as he is achieved and you have not done and definitely airway management you can think of an endotracheal tube intubation so just like our uh, rapid sequence intubation you need to plan in here so you need to pre oxygenate may need to you to give the drugs paralytic agent and all those things depending upon the status of the patient but in cardiac arrest usually we don't give any drugs it is a crash airway intubation suppose after achieving rosc you have to look for the hemodynamics because already there is a cardiac arrest and there can be hemodynamic issues also to the patient so you have to go through those steps and you have to select the appropriate agent so that is the first step you have to manage the airway now coming to the next thing you will be connecting this patient to a ventilator right you will be connecting this patient to a ventilator and there are the certain targets that we need to achieve so what are the respiratory parameters that you need to achieve so previously i have already told one breath every 6 seconds one breath every 6 seconds so it will be 10 breaths per minute so the same holds good here so we need to continue at start 10 breaths per minute so that is the starting you have to remember start with 10 breaths per minute and what is the target spo2 so many of us often go ahead and keep the target spo2 as 100% that is not required our target spo2 is between 92 to 98% so this is the target spo2 that we need to achieve so to achieve this spo2 we need to set the fio2 fio2 means fraction of inspired oxygen in the device so depending upon that you need to target 92 to 98 and you fix the fio2 accordingly okay so that is the first thing so you have to remember that what is the respiratory rate that you need to set in you have to set in a respiratory rate of 10 breaths per minute the next thing is that what is the next target saturation the saturation target is between 92 to 98 percentage and what is the third target is the etco2 or the paco2 paco2 is what not etco2 paco2 we have to maintain a paco2 that is normal so what is the normal for the patient 35 to 45 so 35 to 45 mmhg is the paco2 that you need to maintain so for this reasons you have to adjust your ventilator settings so suppose you want to have an suppose the patient pco2 is 60 what you have to do you have to either increase the tidal volume or increase the respiratory rate so that is otherwise called as increase the minute ventilation we have already discussed last time so what is minute ventilation minute ventilation is the sum of your respiratory rate and tidal volume delivered in each breath so that is the uh, thing that you need to remember so you need to increase the 
tidal volume. Suppose there is lot of PCO2 wash out. The patient is losing lot of carbon dioxide. What you have to do? You have to either decrease the respiratory rate or you have giving lot of tidal volume or the patient is having unsynchronized breath. So all those things we need to see in for. So that is the target of PCO2. So now we have done. You remember what I told? Remember A, managing the airway. Then B, we have already set in what is the target. Now coming to C. So we have to manage the hemodynamic parameters. So what are the hemodynamic parameters that you need to remember? You have to maintain a systolic BP of above 90 mmHg. So to achieve that, you have to give either IV fluids or vasopressors. So to achieve this target, you have to either give fluid bolus if the patient is in hypotension or else you need to give vasopressor agents like noradrenaline etc. So that is the target that we need to achieve. So systolic blood pressure of more than 90 mmHg or else what you can remember if the patient is already having an arterial line or you can remember this, you can do mean arterial pressure also. Map. Map of more than 65. Map of more than 65. So that is your heart rate. We are not concerned here. What is the concerning here is for the us is for the the most important thing what is concerned here is the what? Is the blood pressure. So what will happen if there is hypotension? The, if there is a hypotension, there will be further decreased blood flow to the brain, resulting in further brain damage. Already there is a hypoxia, there is a cardiac arrest, and there is already decreased blood supply to the brain. So suppose what will happen if you are again going to go for hypotension, again the brain perfusion is going to be worse. So for that reason, what you have to remember is that you have to uh, target an SBP of more than 90 mmHg or mean arterial pressure of more than 65. Now the most important thing after this, what is the next step that you have to see is that majority of these cardiac arrests are due to primarily acute coronary syndrome, more coronary artery disease related issue. So all patients to get an 12 lead ECG. So that will be the next step. So after achieving the ROC, stabilizing the ABC targets we have already mentioned. The next thing is that you have to go ahead and take an 12 lead ECG. And depending upon the findings in the 12 lead ECG, suppose you are seeing a ST elevation MI is seen in this ECG or else there is an unstable cardiogenic shock or there is a mechanical circulatory support, something called as IABP, intra-arterial balloon pump counterpulsation that you will learn it later. So just remember that if you have taken an ECG and it is showing a features of an ST elevation MI and there is a cardiac circulatory failure, you need to immediately shift this patient to the cath lab that is the ideal thing so let's see let's go with the algorithm so what you have done consider an emergent cardiac intervention if there is an st elevation suppose why is there is an st elevation of my so what is happening there is a this is a blood vessel imagine this is a blood vessel there is an acute thrombus that has been occluding the myocardium so while doing a percutaneous coronary intervention you are removing this clot and as a result you are getting a better blood flow to this heart so that is what we are trying to reach so you have to see that if there isn't any evidence of acute myocardial infarction. If so, you need to go for an immediate cardiac intervention. So that is the next thing. After this, what you have to do? You have to see the patient is conscious oriented and is following your commands. So that is the next step. Suppose from here, the patient can go into cath lab for percutaneous intervention, depending upon your ECG findings or else what you have to do. Suppose there is no STT changes. You are finding some other cause for the cardiac arrest. You are finding out that the cause of cardiac arrest is something else. So next thing that you have to see if the patient is following your commands. Assess his GCS. Just see whether he is following simple commands. If the patient is following the simple commands, yes, that is good because there is no much of brain hypoxia that has happened to the patient. So you can continue your critical care management in the ICU and you have to look in for the reversible causes. If you have not got any reversible cause of cardiac arrest initially, you have to look in now and you have to treat continuously whatever be the cause. Suppose it's a renal failure. Maybe you need to dialyze the patient at that point of time. All those decisions that you can do it and you can continue the critical care management. So if the patient is not awake, suppose the patient is not following your command. What is the next thing? The most important thing that you have to remember a terminology called as targeted temperature management. So this is called as targeted temperature management. Previously it was termed as therapeutic hypothermia. Now that is being changed as targeted temperature management, TTM. So what is our target? What 
we are targeting a body temperature to the patient. Suppose this patient had a cardiac arrest and you have achieved a return of spontaneous circulation and after that what you have secured A, B, C, whatever we have said and you have taken an ECG and you have found out that there is no evidence of MI and you have tried if the patient is following command or not and the patient is not following command. You need to initiate something called as targeted temperature management. So targeted temperature management is what? You need to target a body temperature of 32 to 36 degrees Celsius. Okay. For the next 24 hours. So the core body temperature should be maintained between 32 to 36 degrees Celsius by using a cooling device. Or we have called something called as bear huggers. We can control the body temperature. We need to maintain between 32 to 36 for the next 24 hours. So that is called as targeted temperature management. That is very, very important. So TTM can be a short note. So TTM, when to do TTM, we have to discuss when to do TTM and how to do TTM also is very, very important. What is the target? 32 to 36 degree for 24 hours by using a cooling device. Uh, with a feedback you should be able to know what is the temperature of the patient also it should not the patient should not be very hypothermic also so it should be maintained between 32 to 36 degree then the next important thing is that the patient is not responding you have to look in for why he is not responding you can think of taking a ct brain plane or an eeg what is eeg electroencephalogram it is just like electrical activity of the brain we are taking ecg for heart similarly we can take an eeg to the brain to know the electrical activity of the brain so that is how uh, brain is how active the brain there is slowing means the, there is significant hypoxia that has happened to the brain so by looking at this eeg you can look in for and you can cr continue other critical care management so this is what in a nutshell regarding your post cardiac arrest care algorithm so just we'll go through the algorithm again so you have achieved the return of spontaneous circulation and after that, if the airway, advanced airway is not placed, you can go ahead and place the advanced airway. And next, breathing targets temperature of 10 breaths per minute. The next important thing, saturation of 92 to 98 percentage and PCO2 of 35 to 45 mmHg. So that is A and B and C in circulation, map of more than 90 or SB or map, sorry, map of more than 65 or SBP more than 90. So that is the target. And after that, what you have to do? You have to obtain a to a lead ECG and depending upon the ECG finding, you decide on a percutaneous intervention needed or not. If not needed, look if the patient is following commands or not. The patient is not following command, what do you have to do? You have to start targeted temperature management. Think of taking a CT brain and an EEG and you continue other critical care management. On this side, if the patient is awake, you look for the causes of cardiac arrest. What are be the reversible causes of cardiac arrest? So, so this is the initial stabilization phase. Whatever we have discussed, they have said manage hemodynamic parameters, administer crystalloids and vasopressor agent, whichever of choice that what we have said, the patient is having hypotension. Then this is the most important column of the targeted temperature management and taking an ECG. So, uh, most important thing, there are some secondary causes of brain damage. You ought to almost always remember. There are some secondary causes. So, always remember you should avoid hypoxia. You should avoid hypotension. You should avoid hypo and hyperglycemia. Hypoglycemia in very important. Hypoglycemia. And you should avoid hyperthermia. So any of these things are there, the patient will have further brain damage. So these things you should not, you should avoid. For that reason, you have to maintain a normoxia, normocapnia and euglycemia. And you can length protective ventilation that we have not discussed regarding length protective ventilation. So I will discuss you, teach you when we are taking regarding ARDS ventilation strategies. During that time, we will discuss regarding length protective ventilation and always look in for the reversible causes of cardiac arrest. So this is in a nutshell regarding the post cardiac arrest algorithm. So this post cardiac arrest algorithm can be a short note or it can be a 10 mark question in your exam. So make sure that you are going through this algorithm. These targets are very, very important. What you need to remember so target of 92 to 98 set FAO2 accordingly. That is always what we does error is that we will keep FAO2 high and saturation will be high and there will be a lot of oxygen and there will be free radical injury which is not needed which is causing further damage. You think that oxygen is available let's give more oxygen and always prevent secondary brain damage by preventing hypoxia, by preventing hypotension, by preventing 
hyperthermia and by preventing hypoglycemia so this is very very important so these things you should targets and continue other critical care management like dialysis if needed depending upon the patient situation okay thank you